I would like to start this bridge series videos with a small disclaimer and explanation about what it is that we will talk about the bridge and the bridge has a paramount role on your performance and on playability and by the way this is the only original bridge after 100 years of other traditional people doing the same of the same because of the raw material which is maple and the design extra flat with two with two wings different, being this shorter and thicker and this larger and thinner, with a different uh, saddle, carbon fiber saddle, different measurements and, and a different effect for percussive purposes. So the bridge is ultra important and that's what we will be talking about in this series. Now the disclaimer is as follows because I don't want to offend anyone or nor do I want to criticize or discredit anyone. I will quote uh, an Argentinian luthier called Losao, Ricardo Losao, because he uh, has some knowledge about the basics of the Torres or the traditional school thing. And some interesting things to say and some others which I consider dogmas. Again, I'm not criticizing here anyone. I'm just as, uh, explaining, speaking out my opinion, just as you have the right to speak out your opinion, I also am entitled to speak out my opinion and that's what I will do. I don't want to offend anyone. If you are 
of a very traditional mindset or like traditional guitars or like the same of the same, please don't watch this video because you may become upset and there is no meaning. This video is not, this series of videos are not for you. These videos are only meant for people who want to listen and research and analyze different points of view and those, mainly those opposed to, to the traditional fellows and for people who like innovation and new ideas and of course for my students and for the many fans of AG people who like Simplicio guitars and who like AG guitars or like you know in Spain we are guitar freaks a bit some friends and I <laughs> included in this platform because here our national sport is to play guitar and guitars as an instrument so we are all day on this thing and we should actually be quitting a bit <laughs> and for those who are like me just a middle class guy not buy so many guitars as we do <laughs> because the more one tries not to buy these AG guitars the more difficult it becomes not to buy them so <laughs> then therefore I should be advising also to have some care about what we will say because uh, hopefully it will uh, create enthusiasm for the proper instruments <laughs> which we know what it is and then therefore this video is meant only for people who want to listen different opinions and, and innovative ideas for my students and for friends and fans of AG otherwise this video may or may not be relevant to you if you don't belong to any of these three categories so I'm warning because I don't want to to offend anyone and of course I will quote the Luthier Lozao from Argentina because it's worth to analyze what they are saying there and just have in mind that no Luthier plays at least they don't play like us and they don't play at my level I challenge them many times I learned this from Paco that that Luthiers have zero grounds to to say here what is playability because playability is related to playing, right? So they, they cannot talk about what is playability and sound, what is sound? They can also talk about sound because sound depends on playability. If a guitar is uncomfortable to play, what sound? People say to say face, this guitar sounds good. Yeah, it's hard, it's very hard, but it sounds good. <laughs> you see, translation, please don't, don't, don't make me feel bad <laughs> that I know this thing is unplayable. So when you have a luthier saying, this guitar is good and sounds good and it has good sound or is, is, is comfortable it's the same like my mother talking to another lady in Starbucks and saying you know what my, my son Ruben Diaz he is the best player of the whole world so if a luthier says that it's just groundless they have no ground to say one word about playability and I challenged them in the past I still challenge them now if any of one of the people who are listening this, including the authors there of this video, which is a very educative thing, and I, because I am a guitar freak, I was interested to to watch it, and I want also some of my friends to know what they are saying. Although this video, unfortunately, and because these guys also inherited some of the mentality, predominant mentality here in Spain, meaning to have a total disregard for the English-speaking community. It's, these videos are in Spanish, but don't worry, uh, we will also try to avoid paying much heat to the automat automat uh, automated uh, Google translation software, whatever it is in YouTube, because it's a lousy way to, to understand what they are saying. But don't worry, because I am here as advisor Paco de Lucia, this channel is in English, and I am here because Paco advises specifically that this knowledge should be for everyone and therefore I am into giving this to international audiences in English and unlike them who totally disregard English speaking people I will translate every part which is relevant there are many things there which are, which are said that are not important so don't worry for that I will put the video or the videos about this and then pause it whenever it's necessary and translate it exactly what is what is being said 
otherwise you can search a translator or, or I don't know a friend that knows Spanish and also the field because there are technicalities here which are, it's not easy to translate but you know I don't like when Spanish speaking people disregard English audiences and Paco neither because Paco made also his career and his mo most important things outside of Spain don't forget that he lived 38 years in Mexico from the exactly to become exact exact from the to be accurate from the year 1977 right after recording Al Moraima up to the and in fact he died there he died even there so and he was very concerned that the, the international public would listen this music and get the value of it so therefore uh, because we have to analyze it for the sake of this analysis I have to become objective and just dissect some of the ideas which you will some of the things are great and other are not so great this is my opinion again I'm not discrediting anyone and don't become offended and again if you are into traditional guitars, don't watch this thing because these videos are not for you. These are meant only for my students, for fans of AE and for people who want to know a different version of the facts. And because, you know, I, we are all in, in we are not, my friends, me and my followers, we are all into Simplicio and into these fretboards which are incredible. This is this bridge as well. But if someone said, well, you know, everybody plays black fretboards. It's the same, and therefore they are good. <laughs> it's the same like saying, it's the same like saying, Coca-Cola, uh, every, every, many people drink Coca-Cola. You know, that, that's why it, this doesn't make it a, a healthy drink, right? <laughs> so, because everyone does, or the majority does, and if you are one of these fellows, then don't watch this, because I don't want to become, you to become upset with this. My intention is only to give knowledge from the point of view of of my preceptor and of my mentor and what I realized with the guitar and by the way if you don't agree with what I am going to say then I have no problem with it if you want to to start a conversation or anything in the comment sections please before doing that as always I will require you because we are a serious circle that if you want to disagree or, or or say things I have no problem just prove who you are first what is your realization playing not talking Post a video of you playing, and again, if you, if you, and if you are a luthier and you want to try to give a shot to this challenge I'm making, I still the challenge stands. I did it for many years under the advice of, of my mentor, and I still do it. So the challenge stands, and if you are a luthier and you think you play well enough to tell me what is playability, try to play the things what you listen at the beginning of this video instead of talking and arguing back and forth, and just post that video in the comment sections so if you can't prove me wrong my hypothesis and so far what I consider the only fact true is that no luthier plays anything at that level so if I am wrong then I am willing to accept defeat and erase all the series if you want and apologize in another video publicly but all what we are doing here analyzing anything is for research purposes for educative purposes and with the intention to explore our passion and our hobby which is guitars guitar playing and guitar making so uh, this is what is the thing and therefore having said so let's start so let's start here they are saying that the, the top is most important aspect which of course is not true but here we go la espineta para el otro lado, le di otro tamaño. El personaje supongo, principal de la obra de teatro de la guitarra y la receptora de toda la energía de la cuerda. Definitiva. Mm. Sí. sí, supuestamente si sí, la guitarra es, pertenece a un todo, lo más importante de ese todo es la tapa. Muy lo bien. que más nos hace pensar es la tapa. Mm. Sí, es la fantasía que tenemos con la tapa. A veces da la sensación que no es tan así, yo la tuve muchísimas veces y así es el cierta, no sé, no sé si es así no sé si la tapa es lo más importante so here this guy the, the main luthier, Ricardo Luzao he says that a very good intuition that maybe it's not and in fact he's right 
So let's quote now Maestro Evans Samoji about the fact of the importance of the back and which this evidence destroys all of the nonsense ideas of Torres uh, uh, about overestimating the importance of the top. Let's watch this. There's a series of rubber bands and, and an iron weight on the bottom. Um, the principles of physics that this can illustrate are that if this hand were to be the top and this rubber band the air mass and this mass the back and usually the back is a heavier denser more massive wood than the face so this example would be true to that now the intelligent guitar maker will try to figure out how the top and the back Will function in tandem because it's the relationship of one to the other that will determine how successful an air pump you've made. Uh, we learned this experiment in high school physics where if you have an arrangement like this you could uh, just you know really 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 drive the guitar top with a lot of energy and it'll make very little difference to what the back is doing. It's mostly inert. But at the right frequency relationship, a rather small amount of drive from this end translates into considerable um, increase of efficiency in driving this member. This is what the guitar top and the guitar back do with each other. So it's incumbent on the maker to try to figure out what the... Uh, the um, resonance relationship of those plates ought to be to one another because if you miss it then you, you'll get something that really wastes a lot of the energy it's tricky it takes um, you know years sometimes to to zero in on that but um, everybody who's serious about this will wind up going in this direction now, people like me, fortunately, find this actually interesting. <laughs> it would be deadly boring to a lot of people. <laughs> uh, I want to illustrate one more thing. So, here, this thing here is incredible. Because that is wrong. That's why in AG there is a big deal with the double top guitars now. They're making here, you can see the two woods, two different layers of, of back. Because this, the importance of the pack it has also to do with the materials which are used. You know? And this, you can see also here, in this, in this point, that this guitar has different woods on the, on the back, the double thing there, right? And the fourth this is regarded also the fact that combinations of wood in AG, I've been researched this beautiful guitar of, of Australian eucalyptus and uh, purple hardwood. It's one of these achievements. It's a marvel. I had the chance to play this guitar. It belongs to a collector in Australia. This is a great guitar, too. And some of these I had the privilege to see. This is another eucalyptus with Cocobolo. It's a different combinations in the maple and rosewood. Brazilian rosewood and eucalyptus back. Okay. Then also, I think this is Brazilian rosewood or eucalyptus with. with no, this is uh, sides of, of maple and a cocobolus wood. Or a, actually, I think this is uh, caucus wood, uh, dark back so these things here in AG are every day of their fantastic work which by the way nobody in Spain does these things except AG so this is this is the magnificent work these people do so here we have the importance of the back into facts you know, not just by talking and in fact the back is as important at the, at the top, and of course the wood will have a meaning here. Right. Okay, then let's continue. 
vos pensás, pensás en, en la caja, altura de caja, en lo, lo que mueve dentro de la caja, pensás en cómo la trabajas, pensás... Es la respuesta que hay de madura. La claro. vas a usar. Sí, eh, sí. Porque es el, el alimento de la cuerda va directamente a la tapa y es la, son las cuerdas vocales de la guitarra, ¿viste? Entonces, sí, bueno, que es más importante como en un cantante que la cuerda vocal es, decir, es la tapa. Sí. Pero la verdad puede tener la mejor tapa, el mejor diseño y después meter la gama en otras partes de la, de la construcción y la tapa quedó anulada absolutamente, sí. ¿no? Aquí dice algo que es verdad, Ricardo. Dice algo que es verdad, es que people sometimes regard this guitar is made of this and this wood yeah but he's saying you maybe have the best top there but if you do mistakes in other po uh, points of the process of making it and then then you spoil the whole thing you ruin it so it, it means no nothing that the top is these or so-called solid tops or this of course all every top has to be solid if it is first class but Uh, it takes consideration also the age of the thing and, and also the fact that being an organic material is in, uh, not possible to repeat two guitars. There are not two guitars same, just like there are no two people same. They're similar ones or maybe uh, yeah, twins or whatever, but not exactly same. And even twins have different persons. So, same. But he's saying something true that, that you may ruin the, the wood. <laughs> or made, use uh, nice wood and commit mistakes. Some of the main mistakes that can be committed are here. So here, most important thing, a guitar which has problems in the measurements or this defective, drilling defective measurement, if not even between one string and another, it's a third class guitar, no matter what's the brand or who says if the majority says it's right. That doesn't mean one thing, because you pick a ruler and mathematics are true all the time. So here this is the sixth string, look at the gap here, from the sixth to the fifth string, big space, and here from the fifth to the fourth, less, then here from the fourth to the third, more, and here less, then here more. So this bridge is wrong. Now another one, let's check, this one has also problems, a lot of space from the third to the second and from the second to the first less than here more space from the fifth to the fourth and from the fifth to the sixth less space okay, one more bridge this this one has a big gap here my god from the first to the second string big space and from the second to the third much less and now here more than less like and people sometimes justify or think well this doesn't affect your playing <laughs> <laughs> good luck with that. Good luck. Good luck with your playability, and good luck with your technique, and with what you, with which tone you will get. Having such lousy measurements, you may have maybe the best stop there. <laughs> this and by the way, this in Spanish guitars happens 120 of the time. Crazy this thing. Then one more. This here. From the fifth to the sixth is a big gap. And look here, shorter, then a lot bigger. This is a bigger space. Then from the second to the third, look at this, and then from the second to the first. So outrageous thing. And people sometimes blind people, people who are blind, innocent sometimes, but some are just blind and want to remain blind. That's why I call this don't tell me the emperor is naked. <laughs> Otherwise I would be offended. <laughs> because here is the fact. This is proof. That's what I said about proving things. This is proof. Because here, this is wrong, obviously. And if you pick a ruler, my God. Because just by blind eye, you can see here. We play next nice eye, can you can see. I don't know. Next, here we have another bridge which has problems also. From the third to the second, a lot of space. Forget about the great brands. And here, from the first to the <laughs> second, look. Third to second big, and here second to first small. That's the accuracy. Less <laughs> in between. And then these other two also. It's laughable. The base set. It's totally we laughable. Have another more. This one here, look, the gap Only from the first will to buy the second. And from the second to the third shorter. Then from here even shorter. Then bigger, then shorter. More bridge. Defective bridge. This is a. In this calculation, and of course they keep doing it because people buy, people buy names, and that's why this, that's their business. 
My business is to give knowledge only. I am not into business, I am into giving knowledge, and this is knowledge, and I am proving it with these pictures here. So this, of course, Paco taught me this 20 years ago, and I am telling you the tip. When you choose a guitar, this is the first thing you have to see. From the first to the second, less distance than from the second to the third. And here also, difference. This is less than this distance. Now look at this, sixth to fifth and fifth to fourth. That's also a problem. Now, another more. Here we have distance from the first to the second string bigger than that from the second to the third. And here it's shorter, then here even shorter from the fourth to the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> and from the fifth to the sixth more. <laughs> so this is the bigger space. <laughs> Actually, it's this and also this one here. And these people call themselves luthiers and great stalwarts of the, of the Spanish guitar building. Give me a break. Now, another more. Here we have also pro big problems. Let's check this first to, from first to second string. And then from second to third, look what happens. So this here, check this, 6 to 5th, and now 5 to 4 in this. So this is another problem here, right? Other bridge. Here we have also problems. Check it out, from the 4th to the 3rd, the space, and now check from the 4th to the 5th. How uneven is it? It will affect all your technique. When you're playing, you have to have even space all the time. Paco was so sensitive to this, he made re drill 20 times this guitar, even for the gig to get the right thing, because 9 out of 10 guitars out in the market has have this problem. So people are not aware, you should know. This is the advantage of, of knowing. Now, check it, check it out, this thing, from the 6th to the 5th, and now look at this, 5th to 4th, then here it appears to be the same length from 6th to 5th, and then now, oh, oh, shorter gap from 3rd to 2nd, so this bridge. And the last one, you know, the so-called stalwart, great luthiers don't know how to drill, 6 hole, even straight, with the ruler, so I preserve my right to deny their greatness and go with what I can mathematically make sense of it because this is here look from second to third look at the gap here now check this first to second how it will play well on this guitar it doesn't matter if it's in the amigo plays or anyone plays this <laughs> I don't care I want to feel even distance six walls simple thing, I'm not asking the moon here, I'm just asking six walls, right? In the proper drilling thing. So this is the first thing you have to see. And it's worth to notice that in AG, from the less expensive guitars up to the more expensive ones, they all have a perfectly accurate bridge. Check this one. Now let's, let's see on a 3000 euro guitar. Also same accuracy. Then in a 4200, you read down a Marcelo Alberto 1945. Same perfect drilling. And this bridge is very innovative also because it has both wings different and a carbon fiber saddle, which is the only guitar, nylon string guitar in the world which has a different carbon fiber, a different saddle other than the same of the same of the same of what they don't know is the same because they are so much into it of the dead bone which is a dead sound and a bad transmitter of sound that I explained in other videos which I will post in the description as well so here we have a 6000 euro guitar it's this model here and the same quality there is no difference this from the first to the Every guitar in AG has a perfect drilling. Then we have Santos Hernandez 1930, 8700, same quality also. There is no difference. 10900, the Barbero, 1948, same accuracy. And of course, in the 12,000 euro ones, same accuracy. As we see in, in San, for instance, in Santos Hernandez. Some of the newest guitars, every of these guitars is perfectly calculated and perfectly accurate. 
check this bridge. So it's, it's, it's not a matter of how much it is, nor this nonsense of the quality ratio, uh, uh, relation of quality and, 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 and price is a total nonsense and a lie. When a guitar does not have quality, the only thing left to talk about is price. When quality is there, then price doesn't matter. This is the less expensive guitars in a year. So how come are perfect and how come these other fellows are shameless and cannot even drill six things like <laughs> that? Now they, they think they, they are the great scholars of, of guitar, right? They don't, also don't play by their way, so hello. Here yeah, I'm uh, missing something or what. So let's continue. Th that was about the mistakes that may be committed, and that's why the top is irrelevant. The bridge is very relevant though. This series, remember, are about the bridge, but we will talk about all this thing. <laughs> que integra una guitarra como primer punto móvil después del impacto de ese microcismo que le genera la cuerda pasando por el hueso a través del puente uh -huh. llegando a la tapa uh -huh. en tanto punto móvil y punto que va a excitar aire uh -huh. si ese punto móvil tiene la capacidad de dar y de robar va a ser el primero que lo haga o da o roba y la manera en la que lo da determina por ahí el proceso general me encantó lo del microcismo ¿no? había they are talking about uh actually earthquakes and that because what happens is that that the the string when it is played it produces kind of a seismic thing here a seismic event means meaning that 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 yeah it produces a similar effect to the earthquake and then they have measured these things also with with machines and stuff Ah, con guitarras. ¿no? Ricardo Muñoz, sí. que, que escribió varios libros, que fue uno de los pioneros acá de investigar cómo funcionaba la tapa y a qué velocidad había. Mm. Lo primero que adaptó fue, eh, que hizo fue adaptar un sismógrafo. Para... The speed of vibration measured with the things that they measure the earthquakes, ¿no? The speed of vibration of the top when, when, when the string is plugged. A medir vibraciones de tapa, ¿no? Y eso por lo con el microsismo, evidentemente está en consonancia con el amigo Muñoz. Será el ruido de la plata que afecta, habrá que ver eso, no sé, pero... Será que no tenemos sismos y por eso hablamos alegremente de los sismos. Hablando de sismos, sí, yo vengo de uno bastante fuerte. ¿Te agarró? Sí, mira. Mira, es Pero bueno, es verdad que cuando hablamos de sismos, viste que se habla mucho de placa tectónica, ¿no? Los, los sismógrafos, por ejemplo, Tectonic de plates. Y, y cuando hablamos de placa está bueno definir que la tapa de una guitarra, mm -hmm. cuando hablamos una tapa, una tapa... The top of a guitar is a plate, obviously. Así cualquiera, ¿no? Que puede tener cualquier patrón y se me que eh, Esto es el interior de una tapa, lo que generalmente el guitarrista no mira, porque el guitarrista la mira de este lado. ¿no? Mm -hmm. Entonces, eh, esto es una placa, básicamente, por definición. Y una placa podemos decir que es cualquier material donde tiene muchísima importancia la superficie, el tamaño, el área, uh -huh. en relación al espesor. O sea, cualquier material que tenga gran superficie y que sea finito, por ejemplo, esta pizarra que vamos a usar acá, que es finita y tiene bastante superficie, es una placa. Definición no nada a la hora de hacer vibrar alguna cuerda, Exacto. pero no deja de ser una placa. Se podría hacer tranquilamente una tapa con esa, con esa placa. Cuya superficie y relación con respecto al formato nos preocupa mucho en términos de su masa, de su densidad, de su rigidez, de su peso. Exacto, claro. exacto. La relación ahí de, 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 de la placa está vinculada fundamentalmente a lo que vos decís. Sí, lo, la, lo, lo al peso. Nos preocupa que no colapse la tapa. Uno de los sí. cuando le ponen las cuerdas, claro, claro. porque no es que como, como en un claro. tambor uno golpee la placa, que el, en el tambor cuando, cuando una placa es ajustable vale la pena decir que es una membrana, mm, claro. entonces los tambores generalmente son membranas, los mm. platillos son placas, mm -hmm. claro. entonces... No tampons, eh, but, but eh, drums, the drums, the drums have a membrane, the members that is there, it's just like the skin of the, you know, the, 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 the part of the drum, this the percussive thing, when this is when this is played with the, with the with the with the stick then it kind of uh stops there the, and the vibration 
it produces some effect there that the vibration is transmitted to the rest of the of the of the plaque, the surface of the plaque. Eso se excita con una baqueta, con la mano, con, con lo que sea. Mm -hmm. en, la, en, la, en la guitarra, más allá de esos golpes que dan algunos guitarristas en las piezas raras, mm -hmm. eh, se toca la cuerda, que la cuerda está, a ver, está relacionada a la tapa a través de una pieza que es el puente, ¿no? como vos describiste. Claro. Eh, y bueno, es un bloque, ahí tenemos un, lo que va a ser un puente el día de mañana en bruto, un pedazo de no, esta cara está, ¿no? este sería un puentón, no. pero bueno, a través de esto. Eh, Now la, 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 la. this is the main point. So the, the top has its importance. It vibrates and transmits the sound. But the bridge is that what makes that happen actually. So then we will discuss as, as if with the idea of, of, of saying also as if that should also be considered as part as a fan inside the the guitar or as, uh, actually as an external fan. Una cosa que es notable es que, que, que pasa de largo, porque la guitarra es tan conocida, estamos tan acostumbrados a ver guitarras hechas como lo están, uh -huh. que pensar en, que la, en lo que están haciendo las cuerdas de manera constante sobre esa placa es raro. Están haciendo mucho más de lo que uno puede ver. Parece no estar queriendo moverse, parece estar no pasando nada. Uno baquetea una placa y la interrumpió su momento de estabilidad y después estaba más bajo su estabilidad de nuevo rápido. Sí. So the, in, in the drum, it, when you hit that with the stick, it interrupts the stability of the of the drum of the thing, and and then then of course it transmits that vibration and then it comes back to its own stability. You say. Claro. So now here they are. They will talk about one very important thing which is that the deformity, deformity of the guitars. And you see that I talk of, about this in the video, uh, which I will also quote the description, talking about the equilibrium and what it is the action, the action of the guitar actually, what it is, this action thing is not just the distance from the, it's not just the, the distance of the from the 12 fret here from the string to the 12 fret but also the consistency between the consistency between the line that the string draws the fretboard draws and and the setting of the top draws so but here this is deformity there are two kinds one that is permanent and the other that is let's say elastic which means it comes back and forth, but because of the proper making of it, of this, uh, then it does not become a deformity like this. Now, you can bet 120% of the guitars here in Spain, again, again, same thing, except for AE, have this problem, which also causes problems in tuning. Because you know the distance. If this bridge came like this, now this this create this sinking. The top is sinking down, right? And then what happens? If this is a permanent deformity, of course the bridge is coming this way, and then it's making shorter the distance between this point where the strings break to the to the saddle place and to all the frets, of course it will be out of tune. And now if you get used to that and you think that is okay, then the, good luck, that is your problem. But here the, there are some physic facts which are true and this is the proof that this is this is a problem here. Aquí es válido tanto para la placa como para la cuerda. Me, me hiciste pensar con lo de la interrumpió. Cuando vos golpeás, por ejemplo, un platillo o una Tibal, mm. con la baqueta, en ese punto, ese punto que golpea, genera una inacción de la placa, justamente mm. la vibración ahí se dispara y genera zonas ventrales para todos lados, pero el punto del golpe es una zona nodal o un punto nodal, Eso. ¿no? Nodal entonces point. el puente de alguna manera de la guitarra no deja de ser una zona nodal. Mm -hmm. So we're saying that the, the exact point where, you, where the percussive thing happens in, in a drum, when you hit it with the stick, this is a nodal point, and then therefore the bridge is also a nodal point in this perspective. That is true. That is also very true.
¿Sí? Si bien pasa toda la energía por ahí, esa parte es la parte más rígida que realmente tiene la taponita. Y todas las demás son zonas ventrales. Es decir, que generalmente eso también se aplica aplicable en tradicional guitarras. Esa parte del bridge es la más rígida parte de todo el top. Es una surface, es una placa. Es una surface. Plaque. No sé cómo se pronuncia. Plaque o placa. Lo que más compromete a, a la estabilidad de la tapa, ¿no es cierto? O sea, claro, de la manera en la que es el punto en el que es ejecutado. Claro, ahora cuando hablemos de las espinetas vamos a ver por uh, qué, ¿no? Y además para contar a la gente lo de vientre y no, porque por ahí no todo el que vea el video está yeah, yeah, familiarizado yeah, yeah. con eso. El, el Stratton es este, un muchacho que de, estamos hablando de 1780, por ahí, sí, más o menos. Ahora vamos a hablar sobre Ernest Schladny, que es un físico alemán, born in, 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 in 1756 and, and he died in, in 1827 and he well, researched about the speed of, of sound and many things with acoustics which are relevant to the, to the making of guitars. Creo que antes, sí, creo, creo, creo que no. Hizo una investigación sobre el modo vibratorio de un montón de, de, de placas y sobre, también sobre velocidad de sonido, investigó un montón speed de cosas. Of the sound of of the Exacto, o modos vibratorios del acto. Uh -huh. Y bueno, justamente well, lo que es this. que una placa vibra cuando es excitada y eh, tiene momentos de quietud, momentos que son eh, estáticos de la tapa y otros momentos en donde esas vibraciones logran realmente mover la placa. Él descubrió cuáles son los momentos nodales, los de quietud y los ventrales de mucha excitación, uh -huh. haciendo experimentaciones claro. que se pueden buscar tranquilamente. Sí, y otro ah, típico ejemplo que después nos podríamos llegar también a filmar en algún momento es el paseo de algún material muy livianito en la tapa, uh -huh. claro. eh, en particular el aluminio, las la picas, viste, lo, lo polvoreas un poco, entonces cuando pones en acción una tapa excitando de alguna manera, uh -huh. el ideal sería que tenga la cuerda en tensión y excitarla de alguna otra manera, con, uh -huh. rompiendo algo. Hace no mucho estuvimos haciendo unas experiencias con Juan García, que es un chico de guitarrista que es técnico de sonido, uh -huh. y él le estaba presentando una tesis para la UTN, y entonces ellos rompen una mina de lápiz, es algo muy... Solo un segundo, aquí tenemos que ir a la minuto 907. Lo primero que se me ocurre es, cuando hablamos de placas, uh -huh. estamos hablando de una, de una materia que tenga una superficie relativamente grande en relación al espesor. ¿no? Uh -huh. Entonces, la guitarra usualmente tiene forma de 8, ¿no? Uh -huh. ¿Y cómo se calcula la superficie? Porque no nos dimos acá. Eso. Hace, hace varios años José Romanillo, el maestro José Romanillo, escribió un libro sobre Antonio Torres, que es como el, el, el Stradivari de la guitarra, el papá de la, de la guitarra moderna, ¿no? Estamos hablando de... They are saying that Torres is Stradivarius, but actually, the actual Stradivarius is Francisco Simplicio. Here you can see, I will post the description, this is in the uh, Boston, Massachusetts, in the museum in Boston. They had this 1929 guitar, which was the original model that that Simplicio invented uh, and which is a great great idea here there is another in the Harrison Foundation I will also post in the description these links so that you can see it this is the actual Stradivarius because Stradivarius and these guys they, don't, they just speak forgive me like a parrot here these guys because they are saying that Torres is a Stradivarius of the guitar. I am very sorry, but this is just a politic thing. It's so much politicized, this comment. You don't know, because Torres did not innovate the way that the Stradivarius innovated. It was Simplicio who innovated that way. And innovated creating this kind of... of he challenged the whole idea of the center sample and did that. For instance, the, the teacher of, of Stradivari himself was Amati, as you may know, and Amati did cre create changes in the st structure of the violin, which also Stradivari in his time after that, he also modified things about the length of the bow and about different things. To that I will quote a, a maestro that actually tries and proves there with six violins Stradivarius in his hand talking about this thing here that we will also comment about later on but the thing is that it was Simplicio 
the Stradivarius of the guitar and, and not not Torres. But anyway, this is the part that we disagree because this thing here is so much superior. Besides the fact that AG implemented this as well with the lateral sound port, which also expands the sound and gives us a tridimensional feel to the to the whole thing, then this other idea, which is fantastic. I will post in the description the first links of all the pieces I recorded with this kind of, of guitars, and you can appreciate there what this other dimension of sound in guitar is. So, to us, Francisco Simplicio Stradivarius, because he did innovate and change things. Torres, he just did very small contributions, and most of his ideas, like the top is the only important thing, he make a guitar with rock paper instead of wood in the top to prove that the, the most important thing is the top and to, to disregard the others. We just see how Maestro Samoji proved the importance of the back. So, obviously, he was utterly wrong in many things, and everyone who is following him is following a mistake. I'm sorry, we are against these theories because it has not been proved fact. Also, which, which we will also comment later about the stiffness of the top as a, play, as a, as a plaque of, 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 of certain density, certain stiffness, certain mass, the thicknesses are different. And every, all these factors will be also discussed because the top, the top vibrates also. This, this is another innovation, this energy about the liberation of the top, which means that these bars here have also some orifices here, you see? These are all giving different sounds to the instruments, either by, by the placement of these and, and also by the physical form which they have. That, that makes travel the sound differently. So these equations are all either based on the Simplicio designs, which gives all different colors and different uh, type of sound you get with this. You see how different is the placement. This has two bars passing through this, for instance. This has only one bar passing through here. So many details are there, which AG implemented. This is what is called innovation, right? This is Stradivarius also as well, in fact, because it's continuing the, the job of, of Simplicio and bringing it further up to other, to even to higher dimensions of innovative ideas, which may make it become sound. Don't forget about the problem of not being able to drill. These guys are stuck still in Spain, of how to drill. <laughs> six holes straight and except for AG which is also here in Spain but these people is the great people of Spain not just anyone I am talking about just same of the same Luthiers either big names or not uh, and I challenge them all they don't know one thing of mathematics of Luthiership or of sound and they don't play one note like what we need to play so they cannot say and they cannot tell me what is playability and what is good sound because these things change the sound of the top. Here the top is really really different. So look at this for instance. Look at this. This is that is the, the what the bars do inside and this you have you can see here how the geometrical form of this this the geometrical form of this thing here. This is different, for instance, than, than this, and this has other two holes in the specific placements, which alter, of course, this alters all of the of the acoustic situation here. Look at this. So, this is and now here, this is in center sound hole it has, which also have the liberated top. Look at this, for instance. Why this? This is smaller and this bigger. Well, this is the mystery about it, because the the fans or this this pieces of wood that you see there in this way, those are the the signature of the of the guitar actually, and and most important thing is the order on which those are glued, because that affects the stiffness and the elasticity of the 
of course, depending on the density of the material, but how these are glue. This is a, a password of nine digits or eight in case of Simplicio, eight digits in case of, of the of the Santos Hernandez guitars. There are seven, and then Marcelo Barbero made five of those, and also one on their bridge. If you see here, this has an under bridge as well. Here, so uh, yeah, so this is so such an interesting thing because under bridge is also part of a fan, and then there is this other idea about the bridge being as well uh, like an external fan, right? But inside this thing here, this is extremely relevant to the, this liberated top. Such an innovation, this thing. This is really innovative. We don't doubt. So let's continue. Personal del siglo XIX. Y Romanillo se hizo un libro, muy muy buen libro, dedicado a la, a la biografía de él y al análisis de las guitarras y de la construcción de Le Torres. Y ahí le pidió la ayuda a siendo un matemático amigo que se llama John Mack eh, y le desarrolló una fórmula para calcular superficie, porque quería comparar las distintas etapas de Torres eh, a ver qué tamaño tenía cada etapa. Entonces, una cosa que puede ser útil para que a nosotros nos va a ser útil para un montón de cosas cuando hacemos un instrumento es, yo soy muy malo, ustedes ya lo saben, dibujando, ya han padecido de algún dibujo mío de alguna vez, se supone que eso es el 8 de una guitarra. La guitarra usualmente le vamos a dibujar el, el, el agujerito, ¿no? La voz. So this is about the, the, the measurements of the, of the guitar mathematically. But now of course they are taking for granted that this is the only way to, to, to make it, namely with the center sound wall. That's why Simplicio is the real study, right? It's not this tall guy. Yeah que siempre está adornada por la rosetta y todo eso. Pero acá lo que es importante es, es tomar en cuenta esto. En la, las, las plantillas, esto se le dice plantilla, que es la forma de frente de la guitarra, tienen siempre un par de medidas que no cambian. Que son el largo de la plantilla, en el sentido de la cuerda, como decía acá, y así es el ¿no? Pero lo que vamos a tomar es el largo de, de la tapa, que justamente tiene el mismo el largo que el fondo, ¿no? Siempre la, la guitarra es simétrica en ese sentido. Sí en los laterales, entonces eh, la caja y la tapa tienen el mismo tamaño, vamos a decir. Y de alguna manera vamos a hablar ahora de la tapa diferenciándolo en funcionalidad con respecto al fondo, así que quedémonos en ese silueto, claro. nos quedamos con la tapa. Lo que sí por ahí habría que aclarar que no toda la guitarra tiene la misma medida de largo, hay más o menos un tramón que puede ir, no sé, entre 48 centímetros y 50 centímetros. 48 centímetros, 50 centímetros de length. Eso, esa medida entonces es el largo total, la vamos a llamar, total largo de length. caja. Uh -huh. Y después hay... Otra vez de acá que es el lóbulo menor, lo ponemos así chiquitito, lóbulo menor, esto que sería la cintura, uh -huh. esto que sería el lugar, el lugar más amplio de, de la distancia uh -huh. del lóbulo mayor, y lo ponemos con una M grande. Sí. ¿sí? Uh -huh. Entonces, esto da lugar a la siguiente fórmula para saber cuál es la superficie del total de la tapa, incluida el agujero mismo, ¿eh? también va a estar contemplado. Entonces, si lo... Si, si lo ponemos en fórmula, la idea sería esta. Vamos a cambiar de color así se vuelve un poquito más lindo para ver. Entonces, para ver la, la fórmula, el desarrollo de la fórmula es este, ¿no? Sumamos el lóbulo mayor más la cintura más el lóbulo menor, todo lo que va a dar la suma esta, la multiplicamos este, por el largo total de la caja. Sí. Y a su vez, esto lo dividimos todo por 3. Una vez que tenemos ese resultado, multiplicamos todo por un factor que nos, nos dio el amigo John Mack de 0,96. Esto va a tener un resultado, ¿no? Y el resultado ese se va a expresar en centímetros cuadrados. Esa va a ser la superficie. Porque estos, estas medidas las vamos a cargar en centímetros. Entonces, cuando hablamos del largo total, como bien dijo Raúl, vamos a decir que tiene 49 centímetros de largo de caja, lo expresamos en centímetros. Uh -huh. Se puede agarrar una guitarra, la podemos medir. Uh -huh. El lóbulo mayor, Ricardo, tenemos 36 y medio. Entonces, el lóbulo mayor, 36,5. Sí. Tenés la cintura, 23 y medio. 23 y medio. Y el lóbulo menor. Tienes 28 y medio. 28 y medio. Ahí está, 28,5.
Sacamos el largo de Toda esa suma. 28.5 el largo, sí, está bien. ¿El, el largo cuánto me dijiste? 20, eh, perdón, 48.5. Entonces, por, lo vamos a poner, 48,5. Muy bien, para que quede el registro, 88,5 fue la sumatoria de las longitudes. 88,5. Todos los anchos de la silueta. Bien, todo esto, esto así, multiplicado, multiplicado por 48,5, da 4.292,25. 4.292,25. Con 25, muy bien. Y esto lo dividimos con 3. 6. Dividido 3. Nos da 1430.75. Bien, todo esto entonces, 1430.75. Y a esto lo multiplicamos por 0,96. Lo que da 1373.52. Entonces, la superficie, para que vamos a borrar esta cuenta ahora. Uh -huh. Y vamos a poner la superficie total de la tapa de la guitarra de Raúl. Uh -huh. Me dijiste, entonces, superficie total, 1373.52 centímetros de los cuadrados. Decime de nuevo, 1373.52 centímetros cuadrados. ¿Sí? Esa es la superficie de la tapa de tu guitarra. Esto uh -huh. tiene un error en, este, en esta fórmula de the range of mistake is 1,6%. Digamos. Depende de la curva, de la cintura. Uh -huh. Pero digamos, este es el factor de error: 1,6. Entonces tenemos un bastante es pequeño. pequeño. Que es bastante pequeño. Otra cosa, cálculo que podemos hacer, que es muy básico, que esto ya es de, de escuela primaria, pero siempre útil, uh -huh. es el calcular el tamaño del agujero ¿no? de, la, de la guitarra. Sí, eh, y contemplar también para este cálculo que acabas de hacer antes, que vas a radicar, va, va a establecer una diferencia, el ancho de aro y el ancho sí. de las contrafajas utilizadas para anclar, para depositar esa tapa en la estructura de la cabeza. Exacto, si nosotros dibujamos los aros vistos de arriba de la guitarra, Siempre hay un engorde que va todo por acá alrededor, uh -huh. donde acá la tapa está pegada. Uh -huh. Entonces la superficie uh -huh. real puede llegar a ser esta. Uh -huh. Esto ya es criterio de cada luthier si quiere medir el total porque sabe su, su ancho de contrafaja, uh -huh. o tomar la superficie vibrante sola y hacer el cálculo pertinente. Me ayudó porque descubrí ahí el, la improvisación. La improvisación es algo que yo pienso que cada músico debería a músico del estilo que sea, del clásico, del flamenco, de cualquier otra música debería, debería aprender porque en la improvisación te da mucha libertad y a la vez te da mucho conocimiento de, de dónde estás tocando, de cómo estás tocando, de qué armonías están en cada momento. ¿no? Pablo, Paco, ¿qué es para usted la música popular y qué es la música elitista? Yo creo que la música elitista es el refinamiento de la música popular. Por ejemplo, el flamenco. El flamenco originalmente es una música popular, la música del pueblo de Andalucía. Pero creo que ya no le pertenece más al pueblo, porque de pronto habemos gente que nos hemos pasado toda una vida encerrados, puliendo esa expresión popular. Entonces ha llegado a un nivel en el que, en el, que el pueblo ya no, no, no tiene acceso, sobre todo a los matices que vamos consiguiendo la gente como yo creo que son muchas horas elaborando esa música.